Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. Let's check out the great new features in Drone Pilot Canada version 2.2. Here are the new features in 2.2. A one-touch airspace assessment function, the ability to access checklists and procedures during your flight, the ability to search for airport codes or lat-long GPS coordinates, a cool custom map capability, and lastly, the addition of Yukon Territorial Parks. The one-touch airspace assessment function is a huge time saver when conducting your drone site surveys, and I mentioned it in my recent site survey video. Let's try it out near Moncton, New Brunswick. All you do is tap your desired location on the map, and of course any airports or control zones are now displayed. Just tap away to clear those, then tap Assess Airspace from the dot menu. You will now see a simple report divided into three sections. The class of the airspace, airports within three nautical miles or heliports within one nautical mile of the location, and thirdly, other certified, registered, or military aerodromes within 10 nautical miles. For the airspace, we identify the class, C, D, or E for controlled airspace, class F, restricted and class F advisory along with their co contact details and a brief summary of the rules for flying in these areas. In this particular case it shows we are in a class D control zone, reminds us that it is a no-fly zone for basic pilots and requires a NAV Canada RPAS flight authorization request if we're an advanced pilot. It also provides the emergency phone number for the Moncton control tower. Let's hope we don't need that. Next, since we're within three nautical miles of the Moncton Airport, it provides the name and contact information for the airport, again a brief summary of the rules, and the distance and heading to the center of the aerodrome. In the third and final section, it provides you with a list of all other certified, registered, or military aerodromes within 10 nautical miles of the tapped location. They're listed in order of increasing distance. Okay, in this case there's only one, but there you go. With their contact information, distance, and heading. This is basically the same information as if you had used the emergency button while doing a flight, but it's all incorporated into this handy report so you can have it up front in the event of a flyaway. Note that for all aerodromes in the report, the exact distance, direction, and contact information is provided, which isn't available in any other place in a single form like this. It's incredibly useful for conducting site surveys or when contacting airports and heliports for flight approvals or, heaven forbid, in the event of an emergency. The airspace assessment report can also be exported so you can incorporate it into any documentation you wish. And by the way, flight reviewers will expect you to have exactly this kind of information with you when you conduct your site survey as part of your flight review. The second feature in Release 2.2 is the ability to access your checklists and procedures after you have started recording a flight. A number of people have asked for this, and here it is. After you press the Start Flight button, you will see that there is now a Checklist button and you can access your checklists and procedures. So for example, your landing procedure. And you can tick the boxes and record it as usual. The flight timer continues as you fly and when you're done, hitting End Flight, you can also access your checklists directly from there. And you can see it's retained the things that I had checked from before. This capability is particularly helpful if you have an assistant helping you run through your checklists. Enjoy! The third improvement in version 2.2 are some additional ways to search for locations. Now you can search for airport codes or by the latitude and longitude of a location. Simple enough, but let me show you. All you do is type in the four character airport code into the search box instead of the normal address or town. For example, if I type in C 
Y S U and hit search, we zoom over to the Summerside PEI airport. For latitude and longitude, again select search for location and type in the digital versions of the GPS location separated by a comma. For example, 58.4 comma minus, and don't forget the minus, 106.5. tap search. If we want, we can give this location a name or we can just skip that. Zoom into the middle of Saskatchewan. Pretty cool, eh? The fourth feature was requested by one of our corporate users. They use drones for cell tower inspections and asked if the cell tower locations could be overlaid on the Drone Pilot Canada map cool request and now they can do that. Here's the deal. First, prepare a spreadsheet with all of your locations. The first column is the name of the location and it can be any text you wish. The second is the latitude in digital format. The third is the longitude and the fourth column is the color code for the pin drop. For the colors, just put the first letter from the following, well, crayon colors, I'll call them. Green, rose, yellow, blue, violet, or magenta. You should not have a header row in your file, just the location data itself. Save the spreadsheet as a CSV, comma separated value file, with .csv as the file extension. And send that file to yourself, attached to an email. When you open the attachment, choose Drone Pilot Canada and, after saying OK to a couple of things, your custom map locations will be displayed on the map. Here's a couple of the locations I've imported. If you tap on them, they display the location text you had specified and the distance from your current location and the GPS coordinates. Your custom map locations are also shared with any devices in your team. If you upload a new set of locations, they completely replace any existing set. To erase all the locations, go to the Data Management menu, select Remove Imported Map Locations, and they're gone. A very cool capability for those advanced users who want to manage sets of custom map locations. The final feature in Drone Pilot Canada version 2.2 is that we have added Yukon Territorial Parks to our map in our continual effort to ensure you have safe and legal flying locations at your fingertips. Well, there we have it, Drone Pilot Canada version 2.2. I hope you enjoy the new features. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Give me a big like, and if you don't already do so, please subscribe to my channel and ring that bell for notifications of every one of my new videos. Thanks for watching.